uh, how do we get it started in the first place? So we know it can exist, but the question we want to deal with today is where does it come from? And the answer has to do with charges because we know charges create electric and magnetic fields. So if you have a charge and the charge is just sitting there, it's going to make what? Electric fields. Okay, so we know a charge produces electric fields. If the charge is moving, so we say Q times the velocity, if we have a moving charge, that makes what? Elect electric and magnetic fields, right? It doesn't stop making electric fields just because it, mo it moves. But we also have B, right? So we have, we know how to calculate those things. Well, the new wrinkle now is that not just having a charge, not just the fact that the charge is moving, but the charge has to actually accelerate. That means the velocity has to change. Accelerated charges produce radiative, electric, and magnetic fields. Okay. And there is a particular pattern to this radiation due to a charge. And let's show a little demo here. Okay, what did I just draw? That's a positive charge. So what, what did I just draw here? Electric field. Now, what about those? There's something about those arrows, though. Those, those arrows are not getting smaller. So I didn't draw the magnitudes, but I've drawn directions. Okay, so you can think of these as unit vectors, right? They're just the directions of the electric field, just the pure Coulomb electric field, the first electric field that we dealt with at the beginning of the semester. And uh, we know that the Coulomb field points away from positive charges. So I have a series of observation locations all kind of lined up in a circular pattern. And at each observation location, I, put, I place an arrow in the direction of the electric field. And at the tip of, the, of that arrow, I have another observation location. I draw the next uh, unit vector in the direction of E. And I keep doing that sort of tip to tail. And I sort of play connect the arrows, right? So I, I can think about if I connect all these arrows together, then I can think of the pattern as being just a series of lines. And all the lines are radially away from the positive charge. And these are called, not surprisingly, electric field lines. Okay, So instead of field vectors, we could represent the, the electric field as just lines uh, oriented away from, the po from a positive charge. And the field, line orient, uh, the field line representation we haven't really dealt with at all this semester. We focused on vectors at a particular location in space. But in upper division or upper or higher more abstract applications, the field line picture is often more more often used for electric fields. So it's uh, it's useful to uh, to know what it is. Well, that's the pattern for a static charge. Well, it turns out if you have an accelerated charge, this field line picture changes in kind of an interesting way. So let me run another program. And the field lines all radially away from the positive charge. And I'm going to accelerate the charge. I'm going to take a hammer and smack it. Okay. It's going to exert a small force for a short amount of time, but it's going to, there's going to be an acceleration, right? Because it's starting it from rest, and if I hit it, it's going to have a speed. And so it's going from V equals zero to V not equals zero. So for some very brief amount of time, there's an acceleration. So here I go. I smack the charge. And something happens in this field line picture. We have sort of a bend or a kink in the field line that propagates outward from the original location of the charge. And this pinkish sphere here is where the charge was, where it started. And the uh, charge is now moving at a constant velocity downward. And let me restart the picture. So I smacked it. It accelerated for a shorter period of time. And when it accelerated, it, it caused this kink in the field line to propagate outward. Well, how fast do you suppose this bend or kink is moving outward? Speed of light. That's the radiation. This bend or kink in the field line is what we consider to be the radiative component of the electric field. And once you have a charge accelerate, then it starts to radiate. And the radiation or the direction of that field vector or that, that direction of that radiative field uh, 
has a relationship to the acceleration. And I don't know if you can see this. Let me try this one more time. You notice that that bend in the field line changes size depending on what angle you're at. Okay, so right here we have a pretty large bend in the field line. As we move downward here, that bend, that kink, starts to get smaller. And in fact, in the direction of acceleration, there's no bend at all. Okay, and in fact, in the reverse dire opposite direction of the acceleration, there's no bend at all either. So this radiative component to the electric field propagates outward from an accelerated charge, except in the direction or along the line of the acceleration. The, the radiative field is zero along those directions. We still have the, the Coulomb field. We still have the field just due to the presence of the charge, but we also have, in addition, this radiative field. Let's start again. So let me pause it here. Let's say I'm standing here. And I'm measuring the electric field at this location. What electric field am I measuring? The original field that was created when the charge was static, when it was at the original location. To me, it looks like the charge hasn't moved yet because the information about the moving charge propagates outward at the speed of light. Okay. So I'm standing here now, of course, light slowed it down tremendously here, but for some brief amount of time, I'm detecting the field before the charge even moved. And then sometime later, I say, okay, there's my observation location, and now suddenly I detect this radiative field, and I say, oh, okay, now I see the charge is accelerated, and now I'm detecting the field of, again, it's the field due to the charge, the moving charge, okay? So information about changes or in the electric field propagate outward at the speed of light. And that information is, again, what we call radiation or light. Okay? So we get radiation, but that radiation travels at a finite speed. And so we have to keep that in mind when we're calculating it. 